Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new video. And this time we're going to make a look to the Warhammer Underworld Nether Maze, the gold chosen of the bomb. Or the bomb, the bomb, I guess is, is the word. Uh, this is uh, the third corn warband that we have in the Underworld. So we had two in season one, and now we have this in season, uh, I would say in season four, five, in Nether Maze, okay? Um, I think it's season five or six. So these are the guys that come in the in the warband. So this is a very curious a take on the corn. It's a little bit Aztec, and he is a, a slaughter priest. Okay. So this is another slaughter priest that we have for corn. And we used to have two different models before, and this is the third model they are releasing as a slaughter priest. Also a nice model to be used in Age of Sigmar as a slaughter priest. I think it's quite nice. Uh, no, it's not bended anymore, it moves a little bit. So, easy to assemble. I really like a lot how the, the pins and uh, enter into the notches. I think it's, it's really, uh, really well designed. Uh, this one also assembled very easily. You can see that the gaps are very visible. Maybe here you can see, but this one is painted, it's not going to be visible at all. Uh, uh, they use the different elements. Uh, again, uh, it's a very uh, I think the picture in in the um, in Warhammer community was not really uh, showing how nice is this meter. It's nicer. It's, of course, it's a very bulky guy, and also uh, yeah, I think it's a very interesting. It can be also a champion or a character that can be used in in Age of Sigmar. So really, really nice yeah, meter. And then we have this other guy. Uh, I think in that guy, the only thing I will say is that maybe. The hammer is a little bit small, um, but okay. It's it's again. I like the, this. Uh, I don't know what it is this thing that is throwing flames at the back. So it's really, really, um, and and as well, well designed. The guns are um, are barely visible once assembled, uh, and they all the parts goes together very easily. So uh, easy. I think that they, I find these models quite easy to assemble. They have a lot of parts. They have a, a approximately. Uh, five to six parts per model, so it's for a complex model they assemble very easily. Let's make a look to the gold chosen uh, cards, okay? So we're going to make first look to, uh, to the characters, and then we are going to, to look at some of the main car um, cards of this deck. So, um, we are introducing a new thing that is the blood tide, okay? All these characters will uh, start with one counter that is called a blood tide, and if they um, do damage or receive damage, they receive another blood tide. When you reach three blood tides, you get inspired. So you can see all these characters are quite strong. Um, they have um, four, five, and five uh, lives. They have a, a good, uh, they do a good amount of damage. The only thing is the middle guy. It's quite imprecise. Eh? With two swords, although they use three damage, it's a, a little bit imprecise. Maybe you want to do first the choking grip. Um, this choking whip, you uh, have the potential to do two damage to your opponent. Uh, if they got inspired, so this guy is boosted and uh, uh, it's improving his attack. So it's changing from two hammers to three swords, and on top he has Grievous. And this guy improved the precision of his uh, crushing whip, okay, uh, and as well the precision of his um, choking whip. And on top, the choking whip have. Um, a stagger and a snare and, and ser, sorry, a snare, sorry, this, uh, and of course, and it's increasing by one his number of wounds. So six wounds is quite a tough guy. And this guy, uh, what he's doing is he's increasing the uh, damage throughput, and it does uh, a stagger. But with three damage, uh, normally you will kill more most of the opponents. So these are really three strong guys. The defense is one shield, it's not um, bad, it's not awesome, um, it's, it's quite an average, it's the same uh, defense as a uninspired uh, Stormcast Eternal, so these are going to be three chunky guys, okay, three strong guys. Um, abilities that are interesting, this guy has an ability that you can remove one blood tide and you force your opponent to charge, okay, this can be uh, this is a very interesting ability, although the, you're forcing the, the opponent to charge to you. On the other side, um, 
you are misplacing your opponent in a way and um, you have to do it in a miniature that does not have uh, done any charge of movement and this guy here um, uh, we, uh, using one blood tight from this card um, you can increase the range of this weapon to range 2 what can be interesting and um, these ones do one the throttle is that you use one blood tight and then uh, I think no after, after damage give the target uh, one move token so you give you on top you give the target a move token and they cannot be driven back by this attack then you can remove one blood tight from uh, counter and you do one extra damage so you have the potential to do two damage using one blood tight with the crashing uh, with the choking um, what's called this the choking grip okay so these are the three characters three very uh, quite strong characters let's make a look on the cars first we i would like to start with the objectives so the objective we have let me we have i think three swords in this deck and the rest are scored at the end uh, of the turn okay and we have a combination of position uh, surprisingly uh, of position uh, objective and attack objectives let's start with the search so the first search is just one um, glory point and I score this um, score this immediately after a friendly attack action takes an enemy and uh, fighter out of action if that friendly fighter had one or more blood tide so this has to be quite an automatic so this is a very easy one because you start with blood tides you have a good damage throughput this is something that should be able to be scored quite easily if you don't have blood tide also boom counters are, are, are counting for that so you need blood okay the next one is a potent offering and as well as the search and you score immediately uh, after an enemy fighter is taken out of action if a domain gambit is persisting and uh, we have some domain gambits here so this is going to be quite situational and you will depend on your power deck okay so i will say it's easy uh, and again you want to kill your opponents with this warband but it's not uh, as much better the other one from my point of view and then score this immediately as well for one score point after a friendly attack at you takes again an enemy out of action uh, if you deal uh, by that attack action was exactly so it's the precision uh, attack that we used to have in the past but not for corn so you have to do exactly the damage to kill this is also quite easy card so the, the of the three swords two are quite easy and the other one uh, because it's easy because you can have damage three with this guy damage two with these guys and also you have another damage attack at one uh, damage one attack if you need it with this one so um, quite uh, interesting so uh, these three are quite um, I would say they are quite e easy to do and the next one uh, we go now for the end of the phase so end of the phase if your warband has two or more blood type counters again this can be uh, you, you, you only need to plan for that but this can be quite an automatic one okay um, so I uh, would say it's an easy one it's called this end of the phase if one or more friendly fighter each hold an objective within 1x of uh, no one's territory so here you have to take this into account you have to play the objective in the middle because you will have different cards that uh, will depend on being on no one's territory this warband you will see we will have more objective so this one with with this warband is not what you want to do but it's not that difficult if you plan it correctly so this is requires some planning i will say this is almost a straightforward one point this is a little bit more difficult not impossible the next one score this end of the phase if no enemies fighters call objectives and uh, one or more friendly fighters each hold an objective within one x of no one territory again you have to be in no one's territory this for two points i i have the feeling it's almost easier than the previous one and for two points it's quite a good uh, one so again and these two can be combined so and how we play these days that we don't a lot of times we don't um, dwell the objectives so this can be quite a way uh, a nice way to get like, two uh, glory points let's go this end of the phase if four or more fighters each have one or more charge tokens and or one or more blood tide tokens this can be quite easy at the beginning because you're going to charge you're going to have blood tide and um, you depend that the opponent at least do one charge at the beginning and um, i think this 
can be very situational, can depend a lot on uh, against who you are playing. But I would say most of the times, except end of the battle, that there is not too many players and maybe you cannot score that. But at the beginning of the battle can be quite easy to score. So it will depend a lot if you have this objective at the beginning or end of the battle. But it's not a bad card for two glory points, it's quite good. That's one. Score this end of the phase if four or more fighters each have one or more wound counters or one or more friendly fight there's is in no one's territory and each have a total of eight so you need eight blood tights this is going to be very difficult okay eight blood tights it's a lot uh, or you need four or more fighters each have one or more wound counters and I guess the fighters have to be on so this is going to be uh, quite difficult okay because you need to have a, there needs to be a lot of wounded guys on the board or you need to plan for that. Not an easy one. For three points, yeah, you need to guide to start accumulating blood tight um, uh, counters. Score this end of the phase if two or more successful attack actions were made during your activations, and this is quite easy, I think. This will happen most of the times. You only need to do two successful attacks. Score this end of the phase if three or more fighters each have one or more wound counters. So three or more fighters each have one or more wound counters again and or blood tight counters. This can be this looks difficult but it's not that difficult because you can have your three guys with a blood tight or you can even win one enemy if you only have two guys. So this can be very easy at the beginning, can be quite difficult at the end of the game. Okay again uh, not all the cars. So I got this uh, sorry I, I missed this search before um, after, um, this is a search, I, I missed it before, so we have 4 search, sorry for the mistake. Uh, a friendly fighter is dealt damage by an enemy, a fighter attack action, if that friendly fighter is not taken out of action by the damage. So you have to receive damage and not to die. Um, I think this can be quite easy to score, to be fair. So I think the search are quite good. In this, um, the only search, I think it's more difficult can be the potent and uh, the potent offering but the other three uh, quite uh, can be quite easy to score and the last one um, is the end of the phase if two or more surviving family fighters each have one or more blood type content so you need two with blood type content and those fighters are within one x of non one territories again you have to be in the one territories i think if you plan for this one you only need one blood type content yeah, one well, blood tight counter. So this can be again a quite easy one for two points. So I think the cards here are not difficult to score. Okay, the only one I find very situational and quite difficult can be this one, can be the potent offering, and other ones will depend if you are at the beginning of the end of the battle. But if you plan for them, I think you can score them. What um, power cards we have? We have a lot of prayers, okay? One prayer here, two, three, four, five. And then we have uh, six prayers, seven prayers. And all the prayers you need the bomb. So this guy is key to survive. So you want to, um, to keep him a little bit protected. And you want to do the damage with these two guys, okay? So because you have a lot of power cards that are depending on, 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 the, on your... Um, um, Slaughter priest, okay, or the priest, and they call it just priest, but at the end is a, is a slaughter priest. So, this prayer choose a fighter within two axes and deal one damage to the chosen fighter. So, a very straightforward. This guy just go there, and say, boom, one damage to you for two. Um, yeah, and it's, it's synergy with some of the cards we have seen there. So, very interesting card. This will be in all the decks of this warman. So one damage for free. Next one. Use this before uh, you will remove. Uh, yeah, this is um, to use it instead of a blood tide. So you can. Um, this is a free blood tide that you have there. Okay. So you use it uh, uh, instead of blood tide. This card. And the next one. Uh, choose a friendly fighter and pick up one of the following effects. And this will. We are going to have uh, more of one of these. So you have two effects, right? Um, the first attack can have cliff 
or reroll one attack dice uh, in the attack action. But when you play this card, you can remove one uh, of the chosen fighter's blood type counters, and if you do, you gain both effects. Okay, and we are going to see this more and more. So there are cards that are uh, empowered if you use uh, blood. Type. I think just to have the cliff or the reroll is good enough. Having both is very strong. Here we have a prayer. Again, choose up to two fighters. Push each chosen fighter one x towards an enemy, um, enemy fighter. So this is a pushing. It's very. Uh, this is very good. Can you need the bomb? Eh? Be careful because you need the bomb for all these prayers and it's um, a lot of them. Eh? We, we, as I say, we have six or seven prayers. Um, and if you uh, if you remove um, a blood tight counter, uh, you can push two axes. Okay. We have three very similar cards. Okay, you can see these are all domain prayers. We have the domain of blood. Uh, this is the domain prayer, so it, and it's so the fighters cannot be driving back. This effect persists until the end of the next activation, so this uh, can combine with the other card because I think the, the domain it's a search, so um, yeah, it was one of these search of here, okay. So this is a, uh, you, it combines with the objectives. Uh, you go, and when you remove when you play this card, you can remove one blood tide counter from friendly the bomb. So you have to remove always a blood tide from this guy. And if you do, this effect persists until the end of the round. So if you want to uh, make it last longer, you just all have the same um, effect, uh, the same combination. Okay. So this one. Uh, a fighter will begin to move action, that move action cannot end further from the... So this is forcing you to go against your opponent. So you cannot... Um, you can move, but you cannot move further from your uh, closest enemy. Um, and remember this impact both you and the opponent. This is the main prayer. Again, it's active for one activation, it's persist for one activation, or can be there uh, and for the full round if you uh, use a blood type. And the last one is the domain of wrath, and when it's activating, you must make a charge action if they can. Okay, so it's is forcing you to do charge actions, and again this persists. So this is really they're they're very corn. I think these these prayers are very 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 corn. I think they're very interesting. Play this only in a power step following your activation. You cannot play this in your last. Power step run, choose a fighter adjacent to friendly Gore Hulk. At the start of the next activation, deal two damage to the chosen to the chosen fighter if they are adjacent to a friendly uh, Gore Hulk. Uh, when this card deals damage, you can remove one blood tie counter from Gore Hulk. If you do this, card deals three damage. So this is really a super strong card. Two damage without attacking it's really strong i find this uh, overhead I, I find this very strong and three damage wow it's really good because it's an automatic attack again uh, another prayer you need one again choose one friendly fighter minus one damage to attack actions that target this chosen fighter and this persists until the end of the round so minus one damage to one of your fighters okay it's good. This one is very curious. It's another prayer. Choose a uh, one fighter within one X of no one's territory. Deal one damage to the chosen fighter. Okay, you have to be one fighter. Can be you or opponent fight fighter. Okay. When you play this card, you can remove all blood type counters, at least one. So you have to remove one. You can remove all. From a friendly bomb. If you do, deal one damage to each fighter within one X of no one's territory. So there is really a nuclear bomb on no one's territory. Um, use it with care, right? And it needs to be a, to be a, it needs to be at least one in no one's territory. In the case of blood type, this is a very powerful card. You can see they do damage very easily. This weapon. So this weapon can slaughter quite easily the opponent, but. Again, 
this guy will be key to make your warband play. So more likely you want to keep him at the back and deal most of the damage with the other two guys. And, and then we have the upgrades. Um, I think so far the power cars are quite strong, are quite good, very um, well designed for the warband, but they depend on having the bomb. Eh? Again, we have one, let me remove the, the ones that are the players. We have seven players. Seven players and seen that a lot. So you really need room, uh, room to, to make the, the deck work. The upgrades are not that demanding. So um, the, this is a great um, fighters within two axes um, of this fighter cannot be driving back. So it's your, and again, he cannot be driving back because he will be within these two axes. At the start of each round, give this fighter one blood type content. So this is a blood type for free at the beginning of the round. Quite interesting. Plus two move while this fighter is making a charge action. Again, um, making them very fast. I did. They move three, so they are not really fast guys. And this guy move four. So the, little, the two big guys move three. And then when they get inspired, the, they all move four. So they in, even increase the movement when they are inspired. So really, when they are, you want to inspire them, they, they become quite um, strong. So you want to keep the blood tight to inspire them and then you start using the blood tight later on. This fighter cannot be taken out of action and this effect does not prevent damage uh, being dealt to this fighter. So you cannot kill, you, you accumulate damage. At the end of the action phase, you break this card. When this card is broken, this fighter uh, uh, is taken out of action. So uh, imagine that you have one fighter, one of your fighters that have the last wound. You put this on this fighter. And it is not going to die. Okay, but don't put it on the first turn. This is a card for the second or third round when you it's more of the so it's to make it really a suicide guy. Uh, also, if it's a new guy, you will give a glory point for free to your opponent. So it's it's a card that to be used very carefully. And I think it's only uh, it's not it's only for emergency things. The paragon of slaughter. Uh, in the declared action step uh, of this fighter, range one or two attack actions, you can remove one of this fighter's blood tech counters. If you do that uh, action, um, if you do when that action succeeds, pick one, heal one of this fighter or draw a power card. So for one tight, yeah, you are going to be short of blood tight. So you need to think how you want to use this one. This fighter is considered to be a supporting friendly um, uh, to be a supporting uh, fighter for friendly attack actions made within X. So when X is the so it is a supporting at X distance. This is quite good. Again, okay, everything goes around the blood tide. This is a reaction used this during the successful attack action that targets this fighter. After the out of action uh, check, this fighter makes range one or range two attack, then break this card. It must be. So sorry, it's a reaction when during a successful attack action that target this fighter. Okay, so it's this guy is target after the out of action check. So after the out of action, this fighter makes a range one or range two attack action, then break this card. It must target the ta so you you make a free attack. So you this is quite strong on one of these strong guys. In the declared attack action step, you can remove one of these um, blood tight counters. If you do, pick one cliff, cliff and snare and snare uh, or knockback one. This fighter range one or two attacks. So you can see uh, it's not bad. Again, blood tight. The ones that require you to use blood tight, you have to be careful. Um, use this in a fairly su um, successful range one or two. Enemy warbands. Tweet, um, yeah, so reaction. Use this after a friendly fighter successful range one or two attack action. Enemy warband tweet adjacent to this fighter lethal axis. In addition to other X type, this persists until the end of the round. So 
this is very strong and goes with this guy so you start surrounding everything in flames so you kill and uh, you do an attack action that is successful you don't need to kill and then all the axes around him are lethal so this is a very good one and the last one it uh, depends on the blood so you put that it depends on blood type and this fighter cannot be driving back or if you have two plus one move and if you have three plus one damage to range one attack and it's cumulative so really also a very good card if you want to accumulate blood tide so it's a warband that will require uh, a, a good management of the blood tide and uh, but i think it's quite a strong warband really uh, looking forward to use them because they look very interesting and they look very cold looking like then we have some extra cards okay i will not go in detail on this one so we have 10 of each if I'm not wrong or 12 of each let me see here how many generics they put because I always I think this is 12 of each 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 of each okay we have 10 of each and uh, 10 um, objectives there are some that and, and then we have one uh, and instead of the end um, in, in the side we have one objective for only for um, for um, order, one objective for chaos, one objective for death, and one objective for um, uh, destruction. This one you can forget about that. You need to assign thing attacks actions. This one uh, squad in the face. If your war one uh, played four or more gambits, this is a very situational. Or you have a score no, so this is not very good neither. I don't like it. So she scored this and uh, after a friendly fighter attack action that takes. And this is very easy, so one glory for killing if you are a beast or corn, so it goes in all the corn decks. This one, or that friendly fight that has not a great, so even in chaos, but uh, I think for corn is is mandatory. This card almost, and then we have a search dual, uh, and that you score immediately after a successful attack action, uh, the target a friendly fighter if that, uh, yeah. If you, uh, this is uh, like the core one, so you have to receive damage. You should not be pushed. If you're pushed, you are uh, you're not scoring that. So you score one glory point if you get damage and you are not trapped, you are not pushed, and it's not taking you out of action, of course. Okay? And then we have yeah, we have other ones. Go to this end of the face if there are uh, more enemies in your territory than friendly fighters. So it's there really. This is very situational. I don't think nobody will use it. So there are. Not too many. Uh, I was not very impressed with the generic cards. Score this end of the face. Yeah, if you have two or more scattered actions, I don't think this is going to be easy either. Score this immediately after an enemy fighter in enemy territory or no one's territory was pushed. That enemy fighter ended the push in your territory. So you need to push one guy. This can be. Um, you can play for that. And uh, there is a uh, one that is. There are three or more domain cards were played this round. Or one enemy fighter uh, who each have three, or, or you kill a guy with three grades for one glory. I think it's too much. This one, this one is very strange. Score and um, this immediately after an activation step. If a friendly penumbra lock gambit is persisting, so you need a friendly penumbra lock gambit, and a friendly fighter has the penumbra key upgrade. When you score that this objective, that friendly fighter is taken out of action. In reality. You score this one, but you lose. You give one glory because it goes out of action. Very strange glory. So it's giving you, and then uh, uh, two glory, right? Because you give one glory to your opponent. Um, for a lot of work, eh? you need two other cards. No, no, it's not going to be played. Um, and this one, you score this end. I like that they put the the days there. Because this end face if there one or more surviving friendly minions okay or there are two or more surviving friendly fighters with no wounds counters yeah this is quite easy eh? because this end of the face if there are one or more surviving friendly minions ah, but it has to be the third face sorry so this can be very interesting and uh, for decks like the um, conductive guys there are a lot of minions this can be quite interesting so two glory points uh, but you need to wait for the third I, i'm not very fan on the waiting for the third but then we have as well 10 um gambits 
and we have 10 uh, upgrades. Um, there was one card that I was, I don't know, was here, it was curious to me. No, it's not here, okay. Um, then we have, well, we have again one for each faction. I think the two good ones for me are these two. Uh, you give, um, so choose up to two friendly fighters with no move or charge token. Give the chosen fighter one guard token, so you give two guard tokens for free. And then stagger each enemy fighter adjacent to one or more of the chosen fighters. You can see, right? So this is quite interesting in second round mainly. Very, it's quite a good card. I think I will put it. This one is also quite interesting. So um, choose one friendly fighter and then put one shield counter or a magic counter. The chosen fighter have minus one move. Okay, you give minus one move to minimum of zero, and then the follow will benefit plus one defense or cliff, and use a counter that you have put on top. So it's persisting. It's a feel great with a penalty. It's not bad. And it's not an illusion. And this one, yeah, you cast and you deal one damage. To a vulnerable guy. So it's not that good. Okay, and you need. And this one, choose up to two friendly. Stagger. <coughs> yeah, you stagger your friendly fighters and then push the chosen fighters one X towards the close enemy. Um, situational, right? And uh, maybe you want this to have a support. You want to play it towards the end of the activation of the activation round because you don't want to expose your guys that much, right? You're exposing your guys. This is very good. I think I find this is a very good one. Choose one friendly fighter, deal one damage to the chosen fighter, okay? And then plus two dice in the first attack made by the chosen fighter in the next activation step. If the chosen fighter is a companion, plus one damage to the range one or two attacks. So this is making the dogs quite dangerous. I think this well used can be very. I think it's quite a powerful card because it's plus two dice, eh? So you almost um, guaranteed the attack. Um, this is a healing card. Uh, choose one friendly fighter or choose one enemy fighter. No, no, it's not a. This is a very. This is a gambit card. I think you want to use this one on enemy fighters that doesn't have any wound and. If you do damage, you do damage. So you have to roll magic dice. The swirling does the one damage. The lightning do heal one. So you can use it on yourself. Because normally there is more healing and there is more lightning than than swirlings. But I think the safe way to use is to make damage to your opponents. Not not a very good card. And there are more cards, but I will not go to all. We have a domain as well. We have a couple of domains here. Then there are other cards, and then we have as well upgrades. Um, there are some upgrades that are quite interesting. Again, we have an upgrade for order. Um, I think this this ones from the card from order are quite good in this deck. While making a charge action, this fighter cannot be deal damage. Okay, so it cannot be received damage. Plus one move while making a, a charge action. So plus, on top plus one move if the is a is a beast. Okay, so this quite, can be quite interesting. Okay, and it's an upgrade. So. Then the, this is. Then we go for the first faction, related ones. Uh, this is not that good. Okay, after an attack action, so it's, it's a it's, it's a side thing with two swords. It's quite uh, unreliable. And after this attack action, if the target was taken out of action, you draw a point card. Can be interesting for the extra benefit. But it's quite unreliable. I think you need to boost this this attack if you want to be a little more reliable. The 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 upgrade is again um, more dedicated to corn. If this fighter is a corn fighter, this um, range one or two attack actions have cliff. If this fighter is vulnerable, plus one damage. To, so it's mainly for a corn deck. I think it's not bad to have cliff. And then we have one for death. This fighter range one attack actions that target uh, a fighter with one or more wounds counters half a stagger, and you can reroll one attack dice in these attack actions. So you give you you have a stagger. So it's a way to stagger your opponent. Okay. Um, and then we have the generic ones. So of course we will have seven generic ones. Um, yeah, 
let's make a couple of a look of couple ones. So this is a reaction. So it gives you a reaction. After this fighter makes a move action, that is not part of a super action. Choose one. I just say enemy fighter push the chosen fighter one. It's not great. Okay. This is a map, and it's a very curious one. Okay. Map. So you scatter three from this fighter X and push this fighter up to three axes, and this is an action. So these maps are quite always an action, but I'm not in favor of that because you have to lose one of your actions just to do that. And this is very random, right? You scatter three from this fighter um, X and push this fighter up to three axes along the chain uh, to, uh, uh, to the NX. If the, if the chain is interrupted or if the fighter will be pushed into X that is blocked or occupied, don't push them any farther. Okay, so you push until you three axes or uh, less if you um, touch something. Okay. Uh, after resolving this scatter, if this fighter is an objective token, gain one spend glory point and break this card. It's stupid, difficult, and random to score this glory point, and then you have to use on top of one action. Not interesting at all from my point of view. Then we have this. This is very interesting because it's an upgrade and it's a domain. Okay? It's the first time I see this, I think. Reaction. After an enemy fighter ends a move action adjacent to this fighter, roll one magic dice during a round in which one or more domain gambits were played. Roll two magic dice instead. So you roll one di magic dice if it's if there was player domain, you roll two magic dice. On a roll of Wasurli, you do one damage. So you have to combine this with domain. It's quite quite curious. And then we have um metalid. When this fighter is within three axes of the um, when a fighter is within three axes of this fighter is pushed, that fighter cannot cannot end up push farther from this fight. So you cannot push away. Here we have more parasites. It seems that we have a lot of parasites in this deck. Plus one damage to enemy fighter range one, so it's plus one damage, and plus one damage and Grievous is this fighter range one. So it's plus one damage to enemy fight. Ah, yeah, plus one damage to enemy fighters that are attacking him, and he has plus one damage on Grievous. Not I will never use it. To be fair, this one is. Looks interesting at the beginning, and then I will not use it. Minus one wounds to minimum one, so you put one wound less to your guy. What do what is what you gain for that? A reaction attack. Um, that uh, so during an enemy at a uh, fighter's attack action that targets this fighter, after the when the success step, roll two magic dice for each swimming minus one damage. Oh. I'm not, I have to go on a priest. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a fan of this one. And this is a, yeah, a car ship boarding pike. It's a, it's a damage to quite reliable attack. Okay. That gives you a spend glory. So the bounty is a spend glory point when you get. So overall, not amazing cars. I will say that it's not any game breaking card on the on the generic. I will say the Warband is fun, it's nice, thematic, the generic deck. I don't know if I will use many of these cards. So that's all. That's all what I want to share here. This is the Warhammer Underworld Death and Maze Gore Choosing of the Bomb. Um, nice miniatures, good deck. If you play rivals, I think it can be very interesting Warband. For championship, I think the Warband is still interesting on championship because you can tweak it and make it very strong. I think this Warband will be higher in tier uh, with the nice decks. And um, the generic cars, there are a couple that I like it, but they are not amazing. So that's all for now. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching. And see you again later. Bye.